So just another quick video about Visual Studio in 2023. And a rather big change has been made to the settings uh, in the latest release, which is built um, 78, 31 at the time of this recording. So like I said, it's all about the settings and it's set uh, on a, in a form that the whole idea is to make the settings tab uh, a bit more user-friendly and not as geek-friendly. So that's what they tried to do. So let's see if they've succeeded, right? So it's all in settings. And now you can see this uh, audio settings looks normal, but uh, it's the interface and the controllers uh, pane, settings pane here that's been changed. And then of course down here, there's one missing and that's the remote one. Um, that's not there anymore. And that's because it's been included other, in other places. So don't fear, nothing's missing. Um, it's just a little different. So let's try going through them and see what has happened. So first there's the interface one. And then if you look at the interface one, uh, instead of a, a, separate, a, a separated screen with different areas in it here, for things like karaoke and video, uh, video uh, skins, it's now uh, a lot of previews uh, for just the main interface. And that's of course, of course, so you can click the other ones to get to those parts. So you have these, so you can still click them and you can get to the other skins. So I can click this Denio skin, for instance, the controller 2020 and get that skin. Um, but another thing is that this actually been split out to major layouts. So uh, you can uh, select directly here, go between pro and essential and starter and performance. And then it'll change up here in a layout too. So let's write on that. So that's existentials, existentials, sorry. That's starter, that's performance. So you see it changes up here and then back to pro. So it's a bit more to see in here maybe uh, than before. Uh, uh, and of course, there are a lot more previews to look at at the same time instead of a list. And we click this one, the, the, uh, this skin. So that looks nice. We also have something like the band skin. But maybe more importantly, you can click down here to get more skins. And that actually just jumps to extensions uh, here. So nothing fancy new, just jump into your extensions and select skins. So you can look through them and install them from here. But that's another important thing that's changed uh, here on the interface because there's no old skin when you get in here. So we actually used to use an, the old skin that was always included until this uh, release. Then it's not gonna be there anymore. You need to go into more, get more and, and get it. And there's actually two in there. Uh, so you can get the, the 2018 old skin or you can get the original old skin. And the main difference, in my opinion, between those is if you get the 2018 one, you get the patch section, because that's when that was invent invented. And if you go back to the more original one, this one, you don't have a patch section because it didn't exist yet when this skin was invented. So that's a major difference. But the actually even more important difference, of course, is that uh, compared to the included skin, is to, if you use any kind of touchscreen, like a tablet, uh, tablet probably, um, uh, like a, a Windows Surface Pro, um, Microsoft Windows Surface Pro, then you probably want to get uh, the old skin because it has a tablet mode. So it has basically a, a, a touchscreen mode here that's much better suited for touchscreen uh, than uh, than the, the, the new uh, default skin is. And that goes for both the, the really old one and the semi-old one. So there's not a lot of difference between these two. So that's, in my opinion, that's the main reason to go get the old skin is if you need touchscreen, uh, any kind of touchscreen, including on a Surface Pro, right? So uh, just to mention that it's not gonna be there by default. Another little detail is that if you don't go get a new one, and then for some reason you downgrade your virtual DJ to an older version, um, then you'll get two because the old one was built into the actual uh, executable file. So uh, you always had that. And now you download a new one, and that's just like any other skin that you download. So you have two old skin options, but that doesn't really matter. It's just uh, something uh, to, to to keep in mind, really. So that's about this main uh, this main thing here. Um, and then, of course, you click the other ones. The most important thing is it's not called video skin anymore. It's called video overlay. You can, of course, still disable it. Select the one that you want. And you can also still go and edit it. That's the same, actually, I forgot to mention that. With main skin, you still have the uh, 
the, the edit here, and you actually have a link straight to the documentation. So that's one way they've tried to make it more user-friendly to go do some of this stuff, right? So you can pick that overlay, and again, you can get more. And you can use the karaoke overlays. I don't know yes, that too much, so uh, it's just the default one I have here. And then the maybe uh, interesting bit is that the phone slash tablet uh, skin for the remote. Because not, probably not a lot of people realize that if you use the remote, you can actually also put skin different skins on the remote. So this is uh, from the old version of the remote. Uh, this is the new default for the new version of the remote. And that's good and fine. You can change those. But you can also get more. So you can get things like performance pads. And you can get things like stems controller. So that'll actually make the remote work less than the like a remote because you can't do a lot of stuff that you can do on the actual setup, but you can more like an additional controller. So you can get the remote on your phone, for instance, to use to work just a, a, like a, a lot of performance pads or maybe like a second controller to control just the stems. And I don't think a lot of people actually know this or uh, have thought about this. So that's a pretty cool thing that you can actually use the remote for. And like, um, like I said, there's also no remote skin and a default. And new default, that's because the uh, the remote has actually been updated recently. So if you go to the the app stores on the, on Android uh, or iOS, where you get the remotes, at least the Android one is new now. Pretty recent. Uh, I'm not sure if the iOS one is, has been updated there for the final uh, property release of remote, the new one. Uh, not sure about that, but the Android one is there and you can go get it. And I think the reason it was done uh, it was released now. Uh, it was because the old Android uh, remote didn't really work on new Android phones. Uh, they, for security reasons, they wouldn't allow the the engine software engine it was it was built in. So they had to to update that. And then of course the iOS was also, was also updated, the iOS version. And uh, it's pretty cool. I've tested the Android one, and it's really cool. And I haven't have, don't have an iPhone, so I haven't tested that. That's also why I don't know if that's actually been released in the in the Apple Store yet. But that's another great thing to look at. So that's basically about the, the interface here. Like I said, it was done to make it simpler to use. And I like the fact that it's now four panes. I'm not sure I like this. This looks very cluttered when you have a lot of skins. Um, so maybe not so much this one. It doesn't. I don't really mind. You just have to need to get used to it, right? So not too bad. And it's pretty intuitive how you use it. It's just like finding the right one if you have one. Lots uh, that may take a little bit longer. And like I said, you can edit it, and you have links straight to how you actually edit it. So that's a pretty cool new feature. Then there's the controller section. The controller section has been changed. That's actually better. So we're going here right now. You can see I've, it's detected that I have a Hercules TJ control stylite connected. So that's nice. But you can also see you don't have the list like you usually do. Um, but you do have all the features. So that's important. So let's start by looking at the keyboard because that's got a, a great overhaul. And um, it's actually now that you can see been more been seen as an actual controller. So let's click at that. So by doing that, we don't go straight to the mapping like we used to. Instead, we go to a list where you can actually see here what is ma currently mapped. And if you click a, a button, you can also see uh, what the mapping of it is directly. So you don't need to go into like a subfolder to go get it or click it. Or you can just simply go click this and go in and see what the mapping is. Of course, these didn't have any, but if you click at this, there's a little one on one. Okay, pause. This is the legacy mapping. The, the new default mapping looks like this. So it's like divided in two. And it also has uh, colors for which uh, deck it's actually going to work on. So that's pretty cool. Um, so it makes it a lot easier to actually uh, look up what your uh, keyboard uh, mapping can actually do at any given time. And it also works if you click the uh, um, the control and shift buttons, which of course has secondary mappings often. So you can see if you put shift here, you get the shift mapping on this. So uh, that's a great new tool, I think, for mapping the keyboard. But then moving up onto uh, the actual controller that I, have, uh, that I have connected here, you can see that also don't go directly to the mapping like you used to. 
it has a little middle screen here that's been introduced. And that's actually two links to the, to the manual for this thing. We can try clicking them. So we sort of click Setup and Drivers. So it'll go to the Hercules DJ Control Starlight manual and the virtual DJ homepage. And then it goes straight to Setup and Drivers. Let's click that. So this is why you set up, how you set up the, uh, this controller, right? And, uh, but if I uh, then go back and click the other button, it simply dumps down one step here and goes to the, uh, the control section of the exact same manual. So it just goes between these two, really. But that'll, of course, be the same for all controllers that has a, uh, a distinct uh, manual here, a hardware manual. Uh, and for the older ones, really old ones, actually, by now that doesn't, it'll just go to the, the front page of this. So that's a great new thing, I think, when it comes to, to helping people. You can go straight to the manuals when you go into settings. So that's nice in a, in a simple way, very intuitive that you can do this because it's been put in as a middle page. Going back to Virtual DJ, it also had two, two other buttons because this was kind of hidden before that you could switch what the EQ should do. It's, of course, the stem thingy. So you decide if you want to use uh, uh, EQ, uh, if you want to use the stems on the, on the uh, on the EQ here, or if you want to use the old high, mid, low. Um, so uh, that's a great new thing because people sometimes had a hard time finding these. So that's that's good, I think. Uh, then the, that's the, the fourth button, and that's just going back in time, basically. So now the button part here is exactly the same as the, the whole screen was before. So this is where you go in and do your actual mapping, right? Uh, just like before. This little uh, thing over here is actually the, the old, what I used to call the media window, where you can see activity happening uh, on the controller. So you can actually click a, a button and then you can see what's happening here and if something is happening, uh, or maybe you have like a broken hardware or something. So that's still here, but now it has a, a, a header. It's called activity. So let's call it the activity window from now on, I guess. But otherwise, it's basically like it always was. Um, so that's good and fine, and you can do your mapping here. But you also have two more things that you can actually do. Uh, if I go back to, sorry, if I go back here, um, you have two little things down here. This one actually uh, uh, tells you if this is actually working. So if I right click it, you can set it to rescan, you can uh, uh, reconnect device, and there's some, some of the MIDI stuff and all that stuff that you can set up is by right-clicking this. So that's like right-clicking it before in the list. You get to that by clicking this. But I also have a color indicator. So if I play a track now, by clicking the actual connected hardware, it lights up green for a while. So that means that it's actually working and receiving data. Same with click Q, there's actually stuff happening with this hardware. So that's a nice little indicator. I like that one. And then the final one, this one over here, that's actually also pretty good because uh, not uh, a lot of people realize, at least not in the beginning, that on some controllers, more and more controllers, when you connect them, you get additional options because you get options for the specific controller if it has special hardware needs, something you need to set in the hardware on this specific controller. So it's like signals to the firmware, basically. And on this one, uh, it's pretty boring. So let me just click it. It just jumps into the options and go to the uh, to the right place. But a lot of people didn't realize the options were automatically uh, added when you selected that controller. So let's click this one. See, it jumps in to this specific controller, the Starlight. And you can just simply set the lights mode. That's how it lights up below the controller when you use it. So pretty boring on this specific controller. Of course, it's going to be a long list on a more long list on a more complex controllers. But it's a great thing that they've added this uh, this little cockwheel so uh, people know that there's stuff happening and they can actually set it. So I think that's indeed a, 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 a an improvement. And then, uh, of course, the other part of the remote down here, the part where you actually control it, has been moved up here. So that's now as a controller that's always there, there, just like the keyboard is. So you can click it and you can do the stuff you need to do to actually download it or connect to it when it appears. and getting them matched and all this kind of stuff is now in on this pane when you actually connect the controller. And then uh, previously, uh, you had in the, when you had a long, long list of controllers here, uh, the connected one, uh, you also were able to select uh, something called 
uh, show all compatible controllers. And then it made it possible to actually change stuff on the controllers that wasn't currently connected. And you can actually do that using now this mission controller thing. You can still get to that. So if I click that, I get the list of all the controllers that are uh, supported, but not currently connected. So if I click one of them, those, I again get all these things that I can do with it. Uh, but I can also, so I can go get the manuals, but I can also go and edit the actual mapping if I know there's something I need to change, but I don't have it connected right now. So you can still do that even in this new interface. So I guess that was just about everything. So have they managed to make this more user-friendly and less geek-friendly? I'm not sure. I think this, this controller section is cool, uh, including all the little things you can do. And on the interface, uh, it's cool. It's been split up into panes up here. I'm not too sold on the actual preview everything here because it's gonna, it gets a little cluttered when you have uh, lots of them. It's fine that they've removed the old one, I think. It's, of course, something people need to know. Where if they use the old one, they need to go get it again and select between the 2018 one and the, re uh, the very old one without the, the patch section. But that's just something you need to know, basically, when you do this, right? So uh, so that's fine, too. But now, too, I would still have a photo list and a preview, I think. But maybe that's just me. So uh, this is what I've been done, and that's... I can guarantee that that's the, how it's going to continue, uh, looking like this for the next uh, foreseeable future. So we may as well get used to it. And like I said, I think most of the stuff that they've done here is pretty cool uh, and makes it easier for not power users, like they call them, uh, to do some of this stuff and get a better overview of what's actually in here. Uh, so let me just go back to my regular one, the one I use the most, Default Pro, and I say that's the end of this video.